Good, e good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm Bridget, and today I will be refuting Jacob's claim that our generation's constant use of cell phones will result in a shorter lifespan for millennials. Now, Jacob said that one, hunching over your phone causes back problems, two, staying up late on your cell phone causes sleep deprivation, and three, that cell phones cause major distractions while driving or walking out in public. Now, disputing his first secondary claim that hunching over your phone causes back problems, it's not the phone necessarily, it's our posture while doing so. Um, according to SpineUniverse.com's article titled, Is Your Cell Phone Killing Your Back?, which Jacob used in his speech, was that these devices influence our posture and body mechanics in unhealthy ways that contribute to neck, upper back, shoulder, and arm pain. Furthermore, poor posture while sitting, standing, walking, or in a static position can lead to more than upper body pain and stiffness. So, our cell phones only influence it in the same way that just regular sitting and standing with bad posture can influence it. That's not really an argument, in my opinion. Secondly, the rest of the article goes on to discuss how to fix your posture, something that Jacob failed to mention. It goes on to say that first, don't use your cell phone or tablet for extended computer work. And when you use a cell phone, instead of bending your head down to look at it, simply raise your phone up. And the posture, your posture will be better and you won't have as many back problems in the future. His second claim that staying up late on your cell phone causes sleep deprivation. It's not that millennials are staying up late because we're on our phones. It's because of our work schedules. Um, millennials are working odd hour jobs. Um, according to Newsweek's article, our sleep problem and what to do about it, nearly seven million Americans are currently stringing together part-time jobs. And these people are likely to have erratic and often inconvenient work schedules. Not exactly a recipe for proper R&R. &R. Then it goes on to say that millennials were by far the most stressed and reported the highest rates of feeling sluggish or lazy and having problems concentrating on things they need to do. So once again, it's not our phones, it's our sleep schedule and the fact that we're just stressed out that is causing our sleep deprivation, not our phones. And if you are worried about your phones, Androids have um, two apps that you can use for a blue light filter. Um, one of them is called Twilight and the other is called CF Lumen. And these are apps that you can use if your phone is not already equipped with a blue light filter like most smartphones are. And if you're an iPhone user, iPhone 5S and the newer models are also equipped with a blue light filter. Lastly, Jacob stated that cell phones cause major distractions while driving or walking out in public. Well, here's the thing. We have rules against using your cell phone while driving. According to the National Conference of State Legislatures, 46 states, DC, Puerto Rico, Guam, and the US Virgin Islands ban text messaging for all drivers, and that 37 of those states and DC ban all cell phone use by novice or teen drivers, millennials. So if you follow the rules of the road, these distractions won't happen while driving. So in conclusion, it's not our cell phones having effect on our, or shortening our lifespan, it's the fact that we have bad posture, um, we're stressed out from working on our jobs, and if you follow the rules of the road, driving shouldn't have an issue with cell phones. Thank you.
Structurally, everything is good. I think uh, you, you've got it very clear on all of your points that you are suggesting that alternate causalities exist on all of these particular points, and pointing to the cell phone is an oversimplification of the issue. Uh, I thought that that was a reasonable approach to take to this point. I think you're going to have a hard time denying that cell phones are a part of the process, but you can make the argument that says that they are only a tertiary part of the process, that there are bigger issues in play here. Um, the, uh, the idea for example that uh, posture is really the main culprit here is is okay then you do read a piece of evidence that is directly from the advocates point that kind of repeats and explains the point which makes their point sound stronger uh, than I think you probably wanted it to uh, and even though you followed up with additional information from later in the article suggesting ways that people could address that I'm not sure that that accomplished entirely what it was that you wanted to accomplish on that first point on the second point uh, I, the thing I liked here was that you just went directly for an alternative causality that has nothing to do with phones whatsoever. There's no connection here. And that you documented, particularly with the age group that you are that's being discussed uh, primarily in this situation. Uh, I thought that that was pretty effective. There's not any real discussion of what the advocates' arguments are, except that you do have this uh, idea that the phones are equipped with these uh, blue light screening devices or uh, apps or tools that are available there. I don't remember if that was the advocate's argument that the blue light has a, a negative effect on the sleep patterns in the long run. Um, I think you could explain that this is a, a fix that exists on all these phones. Nobody has to have this problem. That the real source of the problem then is you know, that we have busy lives and people are uh, trying to multitask and they have lots of stresses that occur at this point in their life that uh, you know, are, are different and it's got less to do with being on the cell phone and more to do with the times. And it wouldn't be hard to, I think, find some examples of things going on in these times that would support that position. Uh, the third point, uh, I like the uh, way that you went after this directly saying, look, we recognize that these are potential problems, but we do have actions against them. If people would cooperate with those actions, we wouldn't have any particular issue that's going on. Um, that's, I think those are reasonable arguments to make. I think that you did a good job labeling the claims for the most part, and uh, you had good evidence on your counterpoints, which I thought really helped uh, make your argument a lot more effective. All right. Thank you.